All right, guys, what is going on? And welcome back to the Tipped Out Podcast with your hosts, Brandon Palmer and Danny Christie. What's going on, Danny? How are you, bud? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Just sitting out back uh, watching the sun go down, man. How's uh, frosty New York? Is the weather any better today? Uh, no, not really. We got some rain this afternoon. Kept the course pretty quiet, but uh, <laughs> luckily still been able to get some lessons uh, indoors. Hey, there we go. I forgot. Is you, uh, you got, hey, there you're back. Uh, do you guys have, like, at, at which place? St. Lawrence? No, at, um, just. Oh, yeah. Your boy. Home Studios. Home Studios. We love that. But, uh, Home Studios, man. Speaking of Jordan Spieth, looking like he cooked that backswing drill up at home. That's a, it's a wild maneuver, man. That's another feel versus real right there, right? <laughs> That's crazy. It is crazy, man. I remember uh, Zach Barrett said said it well. Shout out to one of our sports betting analysts, Zach Barrett. Um, he said, "I just remember watching Spieth's um, intro or his rehearsal and being like, man, that is that's that's weird, man.'" But Zach yeah. then proceeded to say, "Well, whatever he's doing, it's got to be." something that's accomplishing it's got to be an exaggerated something that's accomplishing something good in his swing he's got great instructors he's not doing the wrong thing so um i think that was well said and for a lot of people that were i mean uh, countless people coming through the pro shop you'd see what is he doing Mm -hmm. clearly clearly it's working yeah i think that's what really can be some um unusual or odd looking things that'll just really give you the best kind of feel or result for whatever it may be. I mean, all it is is an exaggeration so that, you know, we remember it a little bit more clearly or so that our mind exaggerates the thought of what we're trying to execute for him. I think it's, uh, I'm trying to remember it in my head exactly. I think he, what does he do? It goes up a little more away from him, lays it off kind of late. I don't know. Is that what it looks like? It's a little loop. Yes. It's like, to be honest, I get caught up with the end. Like that's the thing I remember the most, which which he makes kind of like a an over the top move, if you'll say, where he just does a little rehearsal of the club kind of coming out yeah. a little bit before it goes down, which I'm I'm guessing is to stop him from getting too dumped under. I guess he might be coming too much. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I've, yeah. And yeah. then the last part, the, what you were just mentioning is, yeah, it looks like he comes maybe gets a little more feeling of width, and then. Yeah lays it at the top which is interesting but i don't know i mean i definitely think from the little bit you know i've been girled over him and the little bit i've uh analyzed of his swing and based on his misses i think i mean that is his miss right is he he gets a little dumped under and just hits kind of a push block with driver um i know that's hurt him down the stretch at and some tournaments and some big events so I think, you know, that is just an exaggeration for him to feel more on plane or it might feel over the top. I know myself who my first move used to be arms like straight down, get stuck on the side of the body. Now you either flip it or you just stack and hang on and that's the block. So I don't know. I've definitely exaggerated that before too, like feeling like the right shoulder is in the initial move or the left arm pulls my, my chest open through impact. Like we've, you have to exaggerate certain feels to get you uh, back to neutral or back to zero or however you want to say it. Um, You know, that's like when you're learning to play the game, usually we start with a slice, a good instructor will teach you to hook it and then you learn to hit it straight. Like that's, that's how I went through it. I know a lot of people have done the same. But then there's a lot of people still slicing it out there. Um, you have to go from one extreme to the other and then find the middle ground, I, I think, is sometimes the yeah. easiest or the most the most rewarding because you, you don't want to just like only be able to know how to hit one shot or be stuck using one shot. Or for many right now, they have one shot shape, whether it be a hook or a slice, and then they just try and play for that. And usually they're playing for it in the wrong way. You know, usually they're – opening their stance more or closing more and they usually have to do the opposite. So that's why it, it is so crucial to have a trained eye look every now and then um, or even at least film with the right camera angles. But nonetheless, man, I think it's uh, so individual. It's, it's so feel-based and it's such a hot thing. And 
you might see him next week on tour doing the exact opposite. Like I feel like once you have a feel, you just got to play with it. And that's one of our one of our senior instructors at the academy says that all the time like you only get that certain feeling like that I've got it or this is it, the it factor for a couple rounds a week, maybe two weeks max. Like play the most golf you can when you have the right feeling. Don't don't go to the range and try and work on something when you've got the it right now. Like that's what he's got, you know. He's had a lot going on and he's back on top, you know. It's it's awesome to see. Uh, he's done a lot of great work. Cameron McCormick's done great work. I don't know. I listened to a podcast before, and I think you maybe went to a couple different people. But just so yeah. cool, man. One of my favorite golfers, just good stuff. I think that's that's um, really relatable what you just mentioned, uh, where you only get that feel for so long. Like I, I feel like the trend typically when you're working through something or you're trying to counteract one miss that you're struggling yeah. with is it's kind of like a little spectrum of, okay, here's the bad end of, of me hitting this, the hook or whatever it is. All right, now I'm rehearsing this feel and it's starting to feel better and my hook's turning into a draw and now all of a sudden I'm hitting it straight. Oh, now I'm hitting some fades. And then it's like there's a zone there where it's good and it feels great. And then – at some point it might start going the other way where you start slicing it or something. So um, that is probably one of the most interesting and relatable aspects of the golf game for sure. I really, I really think so. The, pro, the pros are the same way. I mean, look who wins and how they win. It's, you know, every so often someone will just have a great event or just get lucky or that's their favorite spot. But like usually guys are trending. They, they usually trend in both good and bad directions. And, it's the same for us. Most golfers just may not play frequently or practice frequently enough um, like the pros do to be able to see those subtle things. And that's the biggest thing, dude. We don't lose our swing. Like, it's still there. All we're losing is, uh, like, if it's for pressure reason, it's just hidden under mental mental fog, uh, which is, like, you know, they call professor mind and monkey mind, um, two different categories of how we compartmentalize, like, stress on the golf course. But then the other part is, like, the little nuances of Tiger being, you know, being back, and he's one of the greatest people with his hands on a golf course. His hands just aren't there right now. Like those little shots, those touchy feelies, like knowing how much it it rolls out in certain things, and just how much you can turn the face over, and those things take time. And uh, that's why like short game is so harped on for high handicappers is because it's like really where the most shots come from and the most confidence I think comes from too like you get it off the tee and I mean if I'm driving the ball well it's usually going to trickle down into the rest of my game um but like Spee said he won without a putter this week you know like that's that's incredible for him for his game to be where it's at like for him to think that he can win without a putter I mean he won when he was putting the best out of anybody yep. on tour that means for he's him to really good <laughs> Like that's crazy. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So. Um. Now I, I kind of want to jump into um a little bit of a different area here, where this is going to be a question, kind of to you, and I just want to you know go back and forth and talk about this um, aspect that I've noticed um, working with somebody that I work with. Um, the shoulders at address the person's shoulders like to stay open, hard for him to square them. Now, one way that you could square them is move the ball back, essentially. I almost wonder, he's got something weird going on where it almost seems like his uh, his left arm or his like, he's like restricted in some way. It's like he's tight maybe on his left side, his left arm's shorter than his right. I don't know. But he has a really hard time feeling comfortable getting shoulder square, what would you say for that? I'm, I'm going to say kind of areas that I see maybe could be the cause, and and, and but you go ahead. Uh, so just after looking at the video of the of the swing and the move here, um, there's a couple of things that I see. So one, it's going to be that the, the hips are closed. So I think it's an exaggeration of uh you know like trying to correct that you know the, the lower body's going one way the mind knows he's going one way 
and then the upper body's doing something else. Uh, the other piece to that, I think, is just the um, the part in the setup with the hips being a little bit too under. I think that just gets the shoulders set and back. And the last piece would be, uh, yeah, like if the ball is too far forward, that's usually going to make the, the shoulders want to kind of set open. But the last thing I thought would make the, the shoulders close more would be such a strong grip, that lead hand, that that shoulder being internally rotated, the palm being pronated, and then the uh, elbow, like I thought, maybe be pointing high and you know to the right of the target. But it's almost more uncomfortable, strong grip and the open shoulders. Um, it could also be the biggest and last kind of culprit I see here is the shoulder levels. It looks like, I can't tell about the hips, but it looks like lead shoulder and trail shoulder are almost kind of the same starting height. And so what that's going to do is, of course, set more weight lead side. It's going to open the shoulders, preset, you know, the, the sternum a little more left. Um, and that, that'll be really uncomfortable and definitely changes backswing as hips are closed to that and the shoulders are open. So uh, I don't know if that aligns with what you saw or already work with, but but I feel like I've gotten him into situations where he should, in my mind, I'm looking at it like, how can can you not get your shoulders square and get that, that right hand on the club? But it's like he almost can't reach the club, which is interesting, with his right hand. It's like his chest gets in the way or something. Yeah. So I just... Well, no, it's because his grip is so strong, man. His lead thumb is all the way on the side, so it makes his trail arm have to be so under, like... It literally is too far away from him. Yeah. Like, like it that's could be a, a little. That's a good take for sure. More in in the center, like not center, but you know what I mean. Like, if if he uh, neutralizes his grip and gets the club a little less out in front of him, like towards the target, yeah, then that we square the shoulders more as well. But it has to start with like the hips being a little more back. Yeah. Yeah, and then that'll just give him a little more front bend. I mean, it, it just goes – I mean, any player goes back to this, especially if you go from, like, on the range to then, like, you're watching them play some holes or you're on course now. You have to, like, let them make some swings. But always in setup, you know, we're reminding them the keys of it. But as soon as he hits a good one, like – or you almost like, – you just can't let him keep swinging if all these things are off. Like, of course, we have to progress and, like, go somewhere, start with something you can't fix at all. But, like, in setup, you can because they're not really hitting balls. So, like, you know, you fix the grip to where it's going to actually work for him or, like, at least be able to reach the club. Then then you fix shoulders and you make his hips stay back. Then you do slow motion swings or just feel positions. And then you go into, like, what we've done and you, you know, tee the ball up or you set it up. And then you just hit little chip shots feeling, yeah. you know, like square to square still. And then you just make it larger and larger, you know, like we talked about, go from pitching to then full swing. And then, and, you know, then you add speed. But, like, it's just tough because this will happen on the range too. It's like you hit a really good one because you set them up just how you wanted. And then they'll get so excited they tee another one, they go back to their old shit, and they hit one bad. Then they hit another one bad. Then they hit, and you're just trying to talk, and they're just, like, hitting. You can't, like. It's really tough to just be like, yo, like, chill, or, like, don't have any balls out, or just have ball in hand and then tee them up or show them and then go, like, you don't want to be the instructor that hits 60 balls to the student hitting one, but, like, showing people does actually work, I've found. Um, and they want to make sure you can do it, and they also see it. But what's tough is, like, being face-to-face -face with somebody and doing the grip in front of them so it's actually backward. So, like, when I try and show things now, I get people, like, next to me. Like, we're yeah. both face. So then we're both, we're mimicking the moves. Then we'll get in a mirror. Then we'll kind of go face to face. And, I, you know, it's just always asking them if they get it. Um, but, yeah, it does. it is tough, like, flip, like, mirror image. Um, yeah. So I just want to add on to what you just brought up. Very good points. Um, and I feel like that's somewhere almost that, that I struggle with or need to improve is is it's very easy to almost get caught up, move move too fast yourself or get caught up yep. in where the student's trying to go yep. with, you know, accommodating their wants and needs, but also 
trusting yourself and understanding, okay, this is what needs to be changed first. We can't race to here before we're here. And, and that's definitely somewhere, something that, that you need to be very solid and good about as an instructor. So I think that's well said. And I think that's an area of, of improvement for myself. That, that's huge. And I mean, I, I've learned a lot about that in these past couple months. And like, that's why, um, that's why we like don't let the kids choose things because they just don't know yet. Even though I would love to think they do know, or like that I thought I somewhat knew things at that age, or like all these kids that you know a five handicap he knows, but like some of them don't, man. Some of them are just young and talented, and they you know they're here all the time, so we put them in the right positions. Others get it and they learn and they do it for themselves, but like doesn't matter how old you are or how long you've golfed. Sometimes people just don't learn the right things, or they just chase those tips or the the hot takes. And that's really what it is usually is like, oh, no, I just want to hit a draw. Well, why? Oh, it goes farther. But like, you know, maybe like, of course it does technically, but like maybe not how you're doing it or your natural swing isn't a draw or you're just setting up for a hook or like, you know, they, they, you, they honestly don't know. And sometimes they do. And as instructors we will make the wrong call from time to time or like bark up the wrong tree. And then, then you just adjust like that's that's normal that's our job but it's also our job like you said to know when to push and pull and like let them take the reins a little bit or to know like in the book um with Hank Haney and Tiger I I what is it the big miss he said like he would have to trick Tiger into thinking it was idea, his idea just for Tiger to utilize it like sometimes you're gonna have to do that with a student or uh yeah, anybody a student anyway um, but it's so crucial, dude, that like we slow the student down or just, that's really what it is. Slow them down, but then, you know, yeah. tell them. That, like, you got you know, to be able to, to, I, one thing I found the most and you got to be able to control the, the pace almost or control. I mean, you're in charge is the thing. And, and that's something that I think that's almost the thing I struggle with most is like, I'm a pretty passive, you know. Yeah boom, 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 like I'm right, I can rock with anything or, you know, whatever, you know me, but yeah. you got to be in charge. You have to, you have to have some sort of, of command and, and assertiveness. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, assertiveness yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. If you, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I just, it is so crucial. And it's, I think it's once you have that understanding, it's really about communication, like finding out what their goals are. Um, how quick they want to do that. And then you just kind of bring them down to earth. If they're like, yo, I'm a 40 handicap and I want to be scratched. Like, yo buddy, like this has got to be the gym. This has got to be mental. You got to practice six days a week. If they can't do that, then say, Hey, this isn't realistic. If you want to just hit it better and more consistent and you play a couple times a week or a year or at a corporate outing, like if your goal is just to, you know, learn the sport for business or whatever, like we got to do that, but you got to have clear, goals and that's with anything and so i think any i think people alike doesn't matter who they are as a golfer but people in general can understand that like once you have direction and goals you can follow it but like do we practice with our students for four to six weeks on just the first three steps of the backswing but you have to learn grip aim and posture first like once you realize that the pros are so good just because their grip, aim, and posture 90% of the time is so spot on that they can just think about the wind, the release they want to use, and where they want to land the ball, and that's all they worry about. For us amateurs, it's tough because we think about how many knuckles do I need to see, my first step of the swing, what my right knee's got to do, the top of the swing, the downswing feel, uh, where the weight is in the through swing. And then you get up over that and you didn't think about the yardage, the slope, the wind, the lie. Like, we didn't think about any of that. And yet we still took two minutes to hit it. Or you get up there so quick with no analyzation and just the innate ability to hit the golf ball. So it's like you got you can't have one or the other. you got to have a strong mental mind, a good course management, and – physical ability as well as technical ability. The golf is extremely hard. Yeah. That, it's simple as that. And so slowing them down, staying in control without being a control freak or, you know, like you can be passive. Um, 
but yeah, it's just about being sure of yourself. And I think as young instructors and usually teaching older people with, with wealth, with knowledge, with time under their belt in the game, like it does take a little bit of time to feel comfortable in that. And like, that's just time teaching because the methods that I have in my mind uh, are not even methods or philosophies. Uh, you know, it's the junction of all things we are learning. Uh, it just seems far more efficient. And I, I'm, I'm very confident in my ability to like see something and, and know how to fix it or help it yeah. without it being a band-aid. Like if you want a band-aid fix, I, that's easy. Like I can, I can put lipstick on a pig just for you to feel good about yourself, you know, a couple nights a week at league. Um, but if you want to get way better as a player, like you have to understand certain things about the game and what the lie does to the ball and like what the wind does and how many miles per hour wind. It just it all depends on their goals. That's what it comes down to. How good they want to be, how far they want to hit it, um, how much time do they have to practice. Yep. But, you know, little mental things go a long way too. Course management's huge. If you if you're lazy but you want to get better, like think about how well you think your way around a golf course or you know, read a couple course management books. I guarantee you you'll shave a couple strokes right there. Like that's yep. as simple as that. What what would you say three most common problems are that lead to open shoulders at address? Or maybe not three, mo- you know what I mean? Just let's go in yeah. that direction where real quick value. Um, misinformed on their actual target. Like not lining up behind the ball and picking an intermediate target. Um, and then immediately two that stems from not knowing your target from behind the ball. Uh, improper alignment of the lower body, I'd say. Because I feel like a big correction is just now trying to, one, stand taller, the shoulders get more level, that presets the shoulders open. Um, and then because of the lower body is so shut, we stand up and look over our lead shoulder, and that's usually what makes us kind of preset the shoulders open. Um, and then I would say three would be, I would say mismatching of grip, like just having a misinformed and actually just mismatch grip for what shot shape and what setup they currently have. Like it's just uncomfortable and um, probably really in the palm as well. Like that would, you know, they really try and incorporate body when the hands aren't comfortable on the club. Like your boy might be having such a strong grip and it's gripped down. Like we talked about, it's yep. not the heel pad. It's on top. He grips, he yep. grips up. Uh, palm and then over top so then when that happens it goes palmy gets the shoulders open and then from there i mean that's why another culprit i can think of why he's arms are so kind of tucked and he's standing up with a chest like he's trying to get his power from the chest um and it's you know we got to utilize those hands as very quick levers it doesn't have to be as Weak hands and flippy, whippy. Flippy is a terrible word. I'm sorry, Mr. Ben Hogan. But, like, I've, I'm reading one of his books right now, and that's, like, all it is, man. Just roll the hands open and roll them back through as fast as possible. Amateurs just roll their hands open and never close them. That's why the face is miles open. But, so, yeah, I'll just say misinformed and misaligned uh, and then just improper grip. So all those things pertain to – before we actually move the club away. So there's three easy things right there, or not even easy, but three things that can be totally game-changing for you, yeah. like life-changing in terms of golf. Grip, aim, posture, got to, got to have it consistent so we know where our miss actually is coming from. It's not, you know, it could just be misaligned. That's usually what it is, right? I mean, my most strugglesome rounds, dude, my feet are just 40 yards right. Like, it's just... And that can just be how I'm literally walking into the golf ball. And, yep. You know, uh, feel versus real, just like Spieth, back to the RBC, man. It's uh, feel versus real. It's not the same for everybody, but it certainly uh, has a rhyme or a reason usually when it's coming from that much of, you know, backed and knowledgeable instruction, right? Definitely. Uh, all I'd like to add, um, I know you said it earlier, I just kind of want to compound it is, Shoulders being open a lot of times also has to do with shoulder levels. Um, 
that's really I mean, and it ties into the way you look at the at your target. Um, it's huge tracing the uh, target line with your eyes looking sideways. It also helps you add tilt. Basically, as soon as we start looking and turning our head, we start to open up. Our shoulders start to level out, and then that hand starts to reach around and uh, yeah. and and grab the club instead of realizing it can kind of come from more under feeling, and and that helps you keep the shoulders square. Hundred percent, I couldn't agree more. And that's uh, yeah, I, I really like that idea. So that's another thing, guys. We linked below if you guys are checking this out on YouTube. I don't know if we can link something like this in Spotify. Uh, but Danny and I just came out with like a, an email list for you guys so that you can stay up to date on all things in terms of whatever discounts of awesome companies we work with, uh, just staying up to date on when we post. And then of course, uh, anything we come out with, like are going to be our instructional free eBooks and stuff like that. So the next piece of this, I know Danny didn't allude too much about the swing or we didn't show, uh, what client he's talking about. But big thing, so if you guys are interested in kind of getting your swing broken down or analyzed or would like us to go over it, I feel like we could really do that, some screen share stuff. Uh, It's just all about gaining more knowledge. So send your swings in. Click this link below, guys, if you're checking it out on YouTube or if this is a clip on Instagram right now. Click that link. Subscribe to the newsletter. You guys will never miss another episode, discount, or tip from us again. So I don't know. uh, Yeah. I I just want to – for. Because I, I was just curious and realized, how would people send us their swing? Are they going to access, have access to our email by joining the uh, the page? Or is it going to be a send it to us on Instagram at tipped out? Yeah, so we can do it any way. So we can do it through Instagram, but they also will, through cl- clicking that link, uh, it's going to take you to a landing page where you can throw your email in. But right at the v- very bottom of that, we'll have all our social media and our email. So you can send the swing right to the email. Uh, once you load or once you kind of subscribe to the email list, I can send you an email as well. So multiple ways, check it out on the Instagram, shoot us a follow question, all your swing there. And the same thing with the, uh, tipped out DCBP at Gmail. If you guys are looking to send some swings over, we'd, we'd love to work with you guys and just, uh, chop it up, talk things. It's free. Uh, it's a no brainer. If you're someone who, who, likes to get after it, listens to the podcast. Clearly, if you're listening a lot, you want to improve, send it in. You're going to get a free analysis of it, um, and it's going to be great just content. Speaking on that term, and then, you know, find one of us if you live nearby, and you can all of a sudden take that analysis and turn it into the correct drills to, you know, neutralize your weakness and improve from there. That's the that's the biggest thing about these analyzations, guys, is like, it's just about having the baseline or the, the ground zero from where to start or where to go with your swing. Like, I'm not just going to tell you all the things you do bad. We're not just going to harp on the things that you need to improve on. It's, it's going to be the things you do well uh, in that regard too. Like, so this, this could be putting. This could be short game. Uh, this could be full swing. We could do a full bag analysis. You hit us up. Let us know what you want to do, and we can go from there. But – uh. Other than that, incredible stuff from Jordan Spieth. So happy he's back on the totem pole. And uh, back maybe back in the top ten, is it? I believe he is. Yeah, awesome. Let's go. My boy. And then, of course, incredible Masters. We've already talked about that. Great stuff. Incredible Sunday. And uh, subscribe to the email list, guys. It's incredible seeing more numbers of you guys download, listen to, View, share, comment on these uh, episodes we've been doing. It's been a blast for us so far. We want to bring you way more guests. If you guys want to be a guest or you have a guest in mind, some of you guys like to listen to, look up to, uh, get some knowledge from, let us know about that too. We are so open to learn and have people on. So I don't know, man. What else you got for us, Dan? I think that's it. Uh, all I all I'd like to point out too is you know practice your chipping because I feel like I know Speed hit a lot of greens and I know how great he hit it, but I swear there was five or six different instances where I looked up and he was hitting some sort of little wedge shot and he hit each and every one. I never saw him hit one outside of like a putter length, like a putter grip length away. It was incredible. So, you know, the better you get at chipping, the better you're going to be at putting. Yep. Amen to that. All right, BP. That was that was a good one, man. Signing off, brother. Peace and love. Peace and love. Catch you guys soon.
Contraband got that dope. Sometimes I don't feel alright. New girl on my face, she says she nigga, but that's why I don't feel alright. Catch me in the good mood, I just might. Stop talking, I'm breaking the bank. Yeah.